Okay, hi there. Welcome to the next video in our series of short videos focusing on different concepts related to economic efficiency. Let's take a few minutes to think about dynamic efficiency. Uh, what is it? Well, it's basically a process. It happens in a market over time where, and it's linked very strongly to the pace of innovation. It's where the range of choice of products for consumers to buy and sell the, and the quality of those products improves over time. In other words, the market is helping to meet changing needs and wants as a market or an industry evolves. So it's a dynamic process rather than a static process. And the key word really is that dynamic efficiency is linked to innovation. Innovation is essentially about putting a new idea or a novel approach into action. One of the best definitions I've seen is that innovation is the commercially successful exploitation of ideas. And innovation tends to be an iterative process. It's not, you know, occasionally you get groundbreaking changes in ideas. Innovation tends often to be small scale, iterative, uh, 2.0, 3.0 processes, etc. Product innovation is when uh, there is a, the creation of the subsequent introduction of a, of a good or service that's either new or often an improved version of a previous product. A new version of an operating system, for example, a new, a new smartphone, etc., or smart watch. Product innovation, of course, is really key to competition, particularly in uh, oligopoly and other and contestable markets. Process innovation is the implementation of a new or significantly improved production or delivery methods for products. In other words, how goods and services are brought to market be it design, manufacturing, packaging, logistics, uh, retail models. Different business models would also come under that process. And so process innovation helps to lower the marginal and average costs of supply. So in that sense, uh, dynamic process innovation helps to bring down cost. And you could argue that dynamic efficiency is important, again, in shaping the long-term cost and efficiency of getting products to market. Uh, a very important related concept to dynamic efficiency is that of creative destruction, first introduced by the Austrian school economist Joseph Schumpeter. Uh, Schumpeter advocated a laissez-faire approach to economic policy, and he defined creative destruction as the dynamic effects of innovation. A new product, a new business model uh, shakes up the existing market, uh, challenges the established firms, and leads to a reallocation of resources. Now, in the process, some jobs are lost, but others are created. That creativity, in a sense, uh, shakes up the existing order and uh, resources get reallocated. There's no doubt about it that Schumpeter was one of the most influential economists of the 20th century. He popularised creative destruction, and he argued that creative destruction was the essential fact about capitalism. Here's a quote from Schumpeter. The capitalist machine constantly creates new products, new markets, new methods of transportation and organisation that sweep away the old. Schumpeter, here's a picture of him, held that a modern economy was always in dynamic disequilibrium. Uh, Schumpeter's economy is not a closed system, according to Peter Drucker, like Newton's universe. Schumpeter's economy is forever growing, changing its biological uh, rather than mechanistic in nature. And there are some good examples you can use, and I'd always be on the lookout for what you think are examples of creative destruction. So the online travel sector, the, the, the market share of existing travel agents, threatened by many more of us now booking our holidays online. 3D printing uh, is threatening sort of small component manufacturers and distributors because a lot of businesses now can use their own 3D printers to make parts. Who knows, the motor insurance industry might well be threatened by uh, electric cars if there are fewer vehicle collisions with driverless cars. Electric vehicles uh, could be a disruptor for car repair garages, particularly if people are switching to low maintenance vehicles. And there's loads of examples around the place. We were looking the other day at the, 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 the incredible scale of investment now in renewable energy, which is clearly a creatively destructive a force affecting the, the crude oil makers, for example, the big oil, vertically integrated oil giants. So innovation is key to understanding dynamic efficiency. We asked a question in class the other day, I posted this question, where does innovation come from? Where, what are the fundamental 
pathways and the root causes of innovation. And these are some of the points we came up with. Um, think about countries that are highly and widely regarded as being innovative. They have they have a kind of industrial base, a, a base of businesses that are often at the cutting edge of new technologies. In part, it could be because the government protects intellectual property well, strongly. Could well be the case that a country is benefiting from having the inward migration of, of talented people and a diverse labour force, which encourages creative thinking. Investment in human capital is also massively important, particularly perhaps in, in STEM subjects, science, technology, uh, engineering and maths, and maybe even economics. Cultural factors can affect innovation, in particular the attitude toward taking risks, having a strong university sector and related science parks, creating those agglomeration economies and external economies of scale. The government can play a part in terms of perhaps offering tax relief for the forms of tax incentives for, for research. Open markets, both domestically, contestable markets, and also internationally, trading goods and services can be a catalyst for innovation. The two others are quite interesting. We're now seeing the emergence of green financing. So the financial markets are now looking very closely at how to finance environmental investments, environmental innovations, which could well be breakthrough technologies in terms of generating and then scaling up clean energy. And crucially, this is something I just want to focus on just for a minute or so. Don't forget that the government itself, the state sector, can also be an agent, a catalyst for innovation. The economist Mariana Mazzucato, or Mazzucato, who is currently at the UCL, has been prominent in arguing that the state can be highly entrepreneurial. That some of the groundbreaking innovations of our age have often come from state investment, for example, in GPS systems developed by defence organisations. I'll post a link to this rather superb talk at the 2019 WIRED conference where P Professor Mazzucato explains her thinking, her theories of innovation, and the role that the state can play in generating that. It's not just about the private sector, and it's a view that's definitely worth thinking about, uh, I would suggest. In the next video, we're just going to spend a couple of minutes thinking about X inefficiency.